Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to rig a cutout sprite with a 2D skeleton, implement inverse kinematics, and key the bone rotations of the poses into an animation player to create an animation that can be flipped horizontally for a platformer game in Godot 4. We'll start by adding another node as the child of the outer node and name it Parts and Skeleton Container. We want to group these together in order to flip them horizontally later. We'll create another node as the child of this node and name it Parts. We'll start dragging in the character parts. We'll make the hair and facial features children of the head, because they will all be rotated with the head bone. If a part shows up on top of another part, when it should actually be underneath, just right-click it and select Move Up. Do not worry too much about having everything in exactly the right place, as we will have to move them around later. Just make sure the right parts are on top of each other. When you have the parts in, and they are in the order you want, it is time to make the skeleton. We'll start with adding a Skeleton 2D making sure that it is a child of the parts and skeleton container node. We will add a bone and call it base. We will use this bone to control the whole character. We will add another bone as a child of this bone and call it body. We want a separate bone to control the body, because we want the body piece to be able to move independently of the legs, so the character can bend over. We'll make a bone for the head and make it a child of the body. We'll make a bone for the front shoulder, and make it also a child of the body. By front shoulder I mean the one that appears to be closest to us since the character is turned to the side a little. Whether that side is his right or left side will change when we flip him horizontally. When you add a bone as a child of another bone, and then move it away from the first bone, in the editor there will seem to be another bone in between the gap. Don't worry, you do not need to do anything with it. Seeing this kind of confused me at first. We'll make the arm bone a child of the front shoulder bone, and the hand bone a child of the arm bone. We'll duplicate this string of bones, move it to the other side, and rename it to back, shoulder, etc. We'll add a bone for the front hip as a child of the base bone. We'll add a front leg bone as a child of the front thigh bone and a front foot bone has a child of the leg bone. We will duplicate and rename the string of bones to use it for the other leg. Now for each bone we will add a remote transform and assign it to the appropriate body part.
We will select the remote transform and move or rotate it until the body part is in position with the bone. If you select the bone, both the bone and the body part will move. The tip of the bone, where it joins another bone, is the pivot where the joint will rotate. So make sure that the intersection is where you want the rotation to happen. That is why we will be moving the remote transforms, not the bone itself. You can rotate the bones to check how everything is working. In order to get rid of all the errors, we'll go to Skeleton 2D and select Override Rest Pose. This actually should be, I think, Set Rest Pose, but for some reason it thinks there is a Rest Pose when we have not set one yet. After setting a Rest Pose, the errors will go away, and we will be able to restore the character to the Rest Pose whenever we want. After the remote transforms are added and everything is in place, we are ready to add inverse kinematics. This will cause the character's arms and legs to bend the appropriate direction when following a target to make it easier to add key poses to an animation. This is the main benefit of rigging a cutout sprite, except maybe visualizing how everything is put together and moves. You can animate cutout sprites just by rotating the pieces and making keyframes of those rotations in your animation. We'll start with adding four nodes as targets for each of the limbs. We'll then click on the Skeleton 2D, go to Modification, and add a new Skeleton Modification stack. Under Modifications, we'll add a new element, then select Two Bones IK. A bunch of errors will appear, but they will go away once we assign the joints. We will assign the front thigh as Joint 1, the front leg as Joint 2, and the front leg target as the target. We'll add another two bones IK element for the back leg. We'll add two more for the arms selecting the shoulders as joint 1 and the arms as joint 2, and adding the appropriate targets.
since the arms bend the opposite way of the legs. We will also need to select flip backwards. Now as we move the targets, the arms and legs will bend the appropriate directions. This will make it easy to get the keyframes for animation. Some people try to keyframe in the inverse kinematics target location in order to change a 2D skeleton position. However, this will not work if you need to flip the character horizontally, such as in a platformer game where you can move forwards or backwards. If you try to flip the character horizontally, due to a bug in the current version of the engine, the targets will no longer work and the skeleton will twist in weird directions. So currently it is best to use the targets as a tool to find the bone rotations in the keyframe position and key in the bone rotations of the affected bones, not the target position. We will add an animation player and add a new animation called Walk Right. We will move the targets to where we want each keyframe and key in the bone rotations. Then we can go to the 2D skeleton, set enabled to off, and play the animation. Next we will create a flip version of the animation. We will duplicate walk right and rename the animation walk left. We will go back to the walk right animation and select the parts and skeleton container and key in the scale of X for walk right as it is, since we want the scale to go back to 1 when we play this animation. We'll change the scale of X of the part skeleton container to negative 1 to flip the character horizontally, and key this into the walk left animation. Make sure that component ratio is not locked, so that Y is not also selected and the character also flipped vertically. Click on the chain next to these values to unlock the component ratio. And now we can save animations made with the help of the inverse kinematics targets and flip them horizontally. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.